Hello and welcome to the TV Enthusiast discussion of Hannibal. Uh, this is the show we like to call Art Appreciation with Francis Dollarhide. It used to be called Dinner with Hannibal, but that arc's over, and we decided to change up the name for the current arc. Right now we are on the penultimate episode of the entire series. Can you believe it? Well, one episode I left. One episode left, and then this is all over, and we're left to cry. We're left, we're left to cry, or we're left to reflect on what has been and to ponder what could have been. Yeah. So uh, I got a little bragging to do when we talk about this episode. This episode, by the okay. way, called uh, The Number of the Beast is 666. Uh, very beastly episode. <laughs> Uh, I got a little bragging to do here because uh, on a, a while ago when we were doing one of these discussions, I said that I, I predicted that Chilton was going to be taking the place of uh, Freddie Lowndes in the horrific, do you see, do you see uh, scene that was in yes. the movie, in the books. And I nailed it. You nailed it. <laughs> you were pretty much spot on about like all your predictions this season. Pretty much. I, th I think everything you said has come to pass. It's like, and I'm like, I don't know if they're going to go that way. But yeah, you're right. You were right. Uh, also, <laughs> well, time for me to reveal, I'm actually Brian Ford. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> this whole time. <laughs> this whole time I've been talking to Brian Ford. <laughs> 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 oh man, the eagle on Brian Fuller always talk about how amazing he is. Let's let's go kind of uh, a little bit back and let, let's talk about kind of the okay. events of the episode as they come so out. To, there's another interesting. There's another interesting element to that scene that's worth bringing up, but we'll get to that when we go through. So. Uh, we get to see in this episode, I believe it kind of starts off with, um, Will kind of talking to, um, Bedelia, isn't it? Yeah, Bedelia. Yeah, they, 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 they're using Bedelia as, like, sort of a framing device. Mm-hmm. Which I guess works. I'm not so sure. Um, but yeah, Bedelia is talking to Will about Will's relationship with Hannibal. And, and Will's been having some dreams. Will's been having some dreams. Um, then Bedelia drops the revelation. She drops the bomb. Hannibal's in love with Will. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in love in like this serial killer sense where it's not yeah. like a sexual attraction or <laughs> right. it's not a affection. It's killer. like this. Uh, it's like just destroying his life, basically. <laughs> it, it's it's like it makes sense but that Hannibal would be drawn to Will because Hannibal is a sociopath. Will is an empath. Yeah. And so I think Hannibal finds that fascinating intriguing um so i th i think that's my theory i want fun, so <laughs> fun. Yeah. that's very fun i think that's my theory on why hannibal's so drawn to will also the uh they're not even they're not even being coy about the religious allegory now they're just full on out in the just open saying it. <laughs> hey idiot Allegory, you know, they're, they're <laughs> Brian Fuller just beating you over the head with it at this point <laughs> because Hannibal just spells out all the allegory for the viewer <laughs> in the next scene. You know, he's like, he's like, he's talking to Jack and they're just spelling it out. And Jack's like, You're the devil, Hannibal, and Hannibal's like, You're God. Oh, and Will is the lamb whose wrath will fall upon us. So did you get that, everybody? Just so you know, I'm the devil, Jack's God, Will's the lamb, red dragon. Boom. That's yeah. it. <laughs> and it also gives the element to that. Um, it gives us something to talk about with the title of the next episode, the final episode of the series, The Wrath of the Lamb. Which I have an announcement to make. I called it. 
I, told <laughs> you, I said last week Will was the lamb. I was right. <laughs> <laughs> you went you on in on this frag train. <laughs> yeah, I want in on this frag train. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, uh, let's see. What do we have? What what happened after that? I'm gonna look at a little Wikipedia thing on it. Uh, well, let's get right to um, Chilton and Jack and Will and Freddie Lowndes and their plan and what happens there. Okay. Uh, yeah. So. This was a key scene from both the novel and the films in which something pretty major happens to one of the characters in the story. Yeah. Uh, um, it started because uh, Jack and Will had a plan to right. enrage the dragon uh, using the name the Tooth Fairy that he was originally being coined with and spelling out why he would find that name so offensive and everything like that. And then going into just kind of humiliating him, basically. Right. In an article from Freddie Lowndes and taking a portrait, a, a picture, all this stuff to kind of set up so that Will would be the bait um, for... Uh, uh, dollar hide to go after and then they'd catch him but uh he goes after a different bait yes and we see uh tilton full of ego and swagger <laughs> sitting in the back of his car and his his security detail you know both just you just see him just get shot in the head through the window yep they're down and out, and then it's all just dragged out. <laughs> As we know, this is a key departure from the story so far because in the film, in the book, it's Freddie Lowndes who gets captured by Dollar Hyde. Who's uh, a male character in the book. In who's the, a male character. In, yeah. By Philip Seymour Hoffman, I believe, in the um, in Red, Dragon. Red Dragon. I don't, I'm not sure who played him in um, uh, Manhunter. Man, I, I'm not either, and I haven't watched Manhunter yet. Of course, these things aren't very accessible via streaming. I no. actually, I actually had to rent Red Dragon to watch it. Um, thank you, Universal. You would think you would, you know, make these things available for streaming. Come on, <laughs> uh, but that would make it easy. Yeah, it would make. It <laughs> but that would make too much sense. <laughs> <laughs> Can't have that. <laughs> yeah right. Ooh. So, uh, but, but anyway, but the key, the key difference here is that in those mediums, Chilton was not involved in any of this. This was this plan set up was strictly between Jack, Will, and uh, Freddie Lowndes, and so in the show they bring in Chilton into this plan which is the first divergence and your first hint that maybe it's not going to be Freddie Lowndes that ends up in uh, Dollar Hyde's grasp. So they bring in Chilton, and and uh, he ends up being the one captured because of his involvement in this adaptation. Yeah. It's pretty uh, uh, just, just chilling, the scene between... Uh... I mean, even before the kind of grotesque ending, just the the scene of of you know Chilton stuck in the chair, and um, uh, 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 Dollar Hyde talking to him with the right. stocking over his head <laughs> and right. the robe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in the robe, yeah, it's like we. <laughs> uh, it was like. Uh... Yeah, that that was kind of weird. It was like, it was like, I don't know. It it was it's just a weird visual. Yeah. <laughs> I can't I can't describe it. Like it was uh, a tense scene though. With the, him just you could. Oh just, my god, that was fear was just palpable. That was incredibly yeah. tense. Even though even knowing what it was, where it was going, what the outcome was going to be. 
even with knowing that it was such a huge this this season just nails the tension right like last episode with dollar hide at will's house and now this like they've done an excellent job of making dollar hide this very terrifying very just very heart-stopping villain you know um that just fills you with dread every time you know and it has that like amazing ability to do that and you're like you know this is a far better performance than red dragon you know, yeah, i don't yeah. i don't think i ever found ralph the enemy's uh dollar hide to be very scary this one i do <laughs> you know <laughs> um i i said it before but i definitely think Richard Armitage has owned the role of Dollarhide just as much as Mads has owned the role of Hannibal. Yeah, and uh, you with uh, um, Will, with Will Graham. <laughs> yeah, and you with Will Graham. Uh, well, he, he was Will Graham as, like, unlike any other Will Graham put to screen, you know. He... Yeah. he Again, uh, Hugh is playing a much more complex and layered character than what is depicted, especially uh, the movie Will Graham, who's like a piece of cardboard. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, it's night and day. Not one of Norton's best performances? No, it was so wooden. Oh, my God. Brett Ratner, you're, you're an awful director. <laughs> 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 Uh, geez. But yeah, but it, it was a crazy scene. Uh, I was, you know, they got to the part in the middle where, uh, you know, uh, Dollar Hyde's uh, girl shows up. <laughs> but and she's in the room with Chilton, but she can't see. <laughs> that was also she's another departure. Face. That was also another departure from uh, the film. And also kind of an unwelcome one, to be honest, because it kind of broke up the tension of that scene. It's like, because things, tension is building, building, building. And then she shows up, and it's kind of like, kind of the tension dissipates for the whole time she's there. And then she leaves, and then we get the rest of that scene. And it's like, it just felt awkward and weird. And I know why they did it, because... They changed things a bit earlier, so they had to do that to get to where they're going next. Mm -hmm. But it was, yeah, it just didn't sit right. Having <laughs> having uh, having her show up like that. I also want to say another another way you can tell that Chilton was going to end up in the in that spot this season was because Chilton's role from the film. Like in the film and stuff, every time Chilton shows up, his role was was replaced by Alana Bloom. She filled that role in this season. Yeah. So where so every scene, you know, where in the film Chilton is talking to Hannibal, mocking him, it's been Alana Bloom in that place. Especially the scene where Alana takes away Hannibal's privileges and stuff, which was a big scene in the film where that's Chilton doing that. Chilton, <laughs> Chilton doesn't show up in this season at all, not even to fulfill his role, except for like one episode. And so when he shows up again, of course he's going to end up in that chair. <laughs> I like the way that the scene was kind of cut with, um, like they he recorded the video of Chilton, but we didn't see that process of the recording the video. We just saw him setting it up. And then it like cut to it like being finished and saying you did good and you know like I like the way they kind of would kind of keep things a little bit loose like you weren't exactly sure what happened and uh, um, then you know of course you got this horrific scene where uh, Dollar Hyde puts in his teeth yes <laughs> okay so this. Bites off Chilton's lips. So this this is uh, what they were talking about earlier when uh, Brian Fuller said in an interview that that he made a change to something that he 
he he did something from the books from the movie, but he did it in a way that was more gruesome and made everybody gasp. You know, just like made everybody out of breath by how horrible it was. And I'm like, ooh, what is it? Well, the only thing it could be, if you watched the movie, is the scene where Dollar Hyde bites bites off uh, Freddie Lounge's tongue. Yeah. Um, in the movie, you see him lunge at Freddie Lounge. You see the blood pouring down his mouth as Dollar Hyde bites on his tongue, but it doesn't get much more graphic than that. You get the idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Fuller, go Fuller goes worse, and he goes much more graphic. As <laughs> on NBC, I remind everyone. <laughs> on NBC, yes, NBC, a network television show goes more graphic than an R-rated film. <laughs> <laughs> as we watch a character bite off another character's lips. lips. It wasn't his tongue; it was his lips. Because Brian Fuller knew that having Dollar Hyde bite off this guy's lips would look way more gruesome and be way more gruesome than what happened. And that's the only reason why he changed it like that. Because Brian Fuller wanted to gross everybody out. <laughs> <laughs> Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. Um, yeah, so yeah, he bites off his lips. And it is gruesome as heck. And and you, you actually wince from the pain there. You're like... Yeah. <laughs> You know, and it's like, it's like you just wince. Um, then Hannibal gets a package in the mail. Yeah, Stoller Hyde sends Hannibal the lips, which is funny because Dollar Hyde doesn't. Do, it's interesting though to think of the psychology behind that because Dollar Hyde doesn't send the lips to the FBI to taunt them to say, "Hey, I know your ruse. You failed." He doesn't do that. Instead, he sends them to Hannibal. <laughs> like maybe, 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 maybe in order to get some sort of recognition or respect from Hannibal, or something, or just to send Hannibal a lovely or meal, just, or just send Hannibal a lovely meal. The FBI intercepts it. Um, the FBI forces Hannibal to open it in front of them. Um, however, Hannibal still manages to sneak a little snack past them. <laughs> 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 Even with them right there. <laughs> Another thing about the way this show is cut that would that was so great was the way that was handled because we see the scene where he gets the lips. We see Alana Bloom's kind of horror when she sees him unwrap the package and the lips inside. Yeah, we see the lips. And then it cuts them. to something else, and then we see Jack arriving. And and there's only one, one lip, and he's like, "Where's the other one?" And then you see a real quick cut. Of Hannibal slurping up a lip yeah. <laughs> and smiling. <I'm> smiling. <laughs> and in a very, like, you know, just does not give a fuck way. It's like, oh, you still get everything you need from the one. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. That was the best scene from the whole episode. I was like, yes. <laughs> Hannibal stays winning. <laughs> so um then we have a scene where will is again talking to um uh uh, uh, uh Badella, and you kind of get you get this other kind of aspect of what happened in this episode that you didn't really see but it's kind of told to you in a way that kind of puts a whole different spin on it on the events and the way things kind of occurred um and we didn't talk about it but there was a scene in when they were taking a picture with uh chilton and will um and they were trying to get this background in the shot it's all part of this bait and will kind of puts his hand on chilton's shoulder it was kind of a pronounced moment but i didn't really pay it any mind yeah, like, I no, it wasn't, it wasn't really like just natural puts it like that. It's like they stood there and then he put his hand on his shoulder. Like yeah, like Will set Will set him up. Yeah, and and that was addressed later. It's something you just don't even think about, and then Bedelia just puts it to work. Right, Bedelia yeah. puts it to work. Then we realize that Jack intent or Will intentionally set Chilton up there. That he then, by putting his hand on his shoulder, he like. Mark Chilton as like his pet. 
Yes. Dollar Hyde goes after the pets first. Um, and so that's interesting. And then this and might then not we, even be something that Will intentionally knew he was doing. Maybe not. Yeah. But and, then we get, and then we get the uh, flaming wheelchair scene again. You see that over his talk in the therapy. Yeah, you see that over his talk. In the <laughs> you therapy. might have. You might as well have lit the match not, yourself. I know. I know. I know. There was question about whether they were going to do that again since they already did that scene. But the way Brian Fuller did it and the thinking behind it is like, okay, now this ties in to the scene from the last season where they did with Freddie Lowndes. So now it's kind of a parallel to that. To where yeah. to where to, to the point where we now get the idea that we now get the idea that Dolor Hyde did that just because that's what Will did with Freddie Lowndes and he was mirroring that and sending a message in that way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's cool because yeah i was like you i felt the same way i was like are they gonna redo the? are they gonna do the same thing again that they already did because they already referenced this yeah they, they did but they did it in this way that tied it all together in this more meaningful way right exactly so that yeah. was like really cool <laughs> Not only that, but unlike the movies and the books, <laughs> Tilton lived. <laughs> Tilton, yes, Tilton Perhaps lived. Perhaps more um, horrific than, <laughs> than dying by burning to death is surviving after being burned <laughs> like that. So now uh, it seems every season Chilton has something horrific happen to him. But he won't die. Maybe he's immortal. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, he takes a licking and keeps on ticking. Yeah, Unfortunately for him. <laughs> so first he gets like disemboweled. By, it, it, uh, yeah, first he gets disemboweled by Eddie Izzard. Yeah. <laughs> then, then, then he gets yeah. shot in the face <laughs> by uh, by my girl. Yeah. Oh, yeah, then he gets shot in the face by my girl at, under the influence of Hannibal Lecter. Yeah. <laughs> then Hannibal Lecter does something to him himself. I forgot what he did. I don't think he had, he did. Hannibal Hannibal had him in his house once, remember, when he was trying to frame Chilton? But I don't think he did anything. Didn't he just knock him out? Oh maybe. Yeah, I think that's all he did. And then uh Maybe he's not to Hannibal's palate. Well, I guess maybe Hannibal has had a piece of him now. But and now, and now Dolorhide, so it, it just seems like Tilton's purpose is to get passed around various serial killers to have something horrible inflicted upon him by each one of them. And he <laughs> lived, which tells me, you know, this was, of course, we knew this already, but Hannibal was supposed to go for more seasons than it did. This wasn't like. Brian Fuller and everybody knew that this was coming to an end when they started filming and writing and everything this season. They went into the season thinking, well, maybe we will or maybe we won't be picked up, but we're going to write it as if we're going to continue with more seasons. And one of those signs that's striking out right there is that Chilton's still alive because, you know, you had, still had something horrible for him to happen to him in season four, right? Right. <laughs> So, I mean, um, also interesting, you know, they're interviewing Chilton, and you can barely make out what he says. Um, Will, Will somehow understands him. He's like the Chilton whisperer. Yeah, well, to, Will somehow <laughs> understands him. To be honest, I understood him. We just have to, like, listen really hard. I think I <laughs> understood know? the first thing he said, but not the second. <laughs> yeah, okay. uh, so, you just have to listen really hard. He is hard to understand, but... He is legible if you're like listening hard enough. Um, but yeah, so like so like he's talking, Jack doesn't can't understand a word, so Jack asked Will what he's saying. I mean what he's saying is basically Will set him up to be dollar hides. You know, Will set him up for dollar hide and stuff. And you know, at this point, you know, Will has a chance to lie to Jack and say that, you know, he's saying something else, but Will it just Plain face just says, he's saying I set him up. <laughs> and he's also saying this, you know. So, Will, yeah. So, I thought, you know, it's interesting. That Will's not going to lie about that. I think Will's owning it. I think there's, I, I'm, 
I think that it might be the case that Will didn't even realize he was setting him up. That right. it was like almost like a subconscious thing, as in like his fear took a hold of him and broke the plan, and he did something subconsciously. His subconscious mind knew would ruin the plan and put him on the case of Chilton instead of him or something. Right. And that, that didn't become clear to Will himself until Bedelia pointed it out. Right. And it wasn't clear to him until, to be honest, it wasn't even clear to me until Bedelia pointed it out. I was oh, like, yeah. oh, wow, okay. And it, again, <laughs> it's not something that like the film even hinted at or anything, you know? It's like... What I like about it is this is another really smart move by Fuller where, like, you can instantly recall. You don't even have to watch again. You can instantly recall and go, yeah, he did put his arm on him. And, yeah, it was like this kind of – because it was a pronounced moment, but it wasn't so pronounced that it stood out in this kind of, you know, like, what's that mean kind of way. Right. But it was pronounced enough that when it's told to you, you recall and go, oh, yeah, yeah, he did put his hand on his shoulder. Like you right. can distinctly remember that as as small of a detail as it is, because it was just pronounced enough, right, to right. to to stick in your memory. Not enough to make you suspicious, but enough that when when it already hits, you can go back and go, yeah, yeah, I I remember that, you know. Right. Exactly. And this is this is part of the mastery of of how um, Fuller has handled Hannibal. Is just in the way like he'll he'll cut parts out so you won't see the whole picture, or he'll cut information out so you won't get the whole picture, and then it will, will be revealed to you later, and pieces will kind of just click in your head, and you get these little aha moments that um, normally you just you know you wouldn't have it wouldn't click that way with you. Right. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, uh, it's. Uh, um, Another excellent episode of Hannibal. Yeah. Again, I mean, where the beast is six six six, and I I was actually kind of surprised they didn't have more of a Hannibal focus on this. They did have the discussion with Jack and Hannibal, where Jack basically called Hannibal the devil. Right. Out. Um, I mean, but I, I thought with the title they were going to do something more. Um, I mean, sir, but I, I mean because they this the whole proceedings of the episode. Is such a huge moment in in the story. They they can't they can't just skip over or gloss over it. You know, I mean, it's not something that you can do, you can get away with and then call it an adaptation of Red Dragon. Uh, so they knew they had to tackle this head on. And, yeah. Oh, it's it's a great episode though. Still, and um, yeah, we have uh, one episode left, as we said, the season finale or series finale is uh next week saturday uh yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna i used i used to watch the show with my sister and really? she moved out and, and she's a little bit behind i'm gonna see if i can get her caught up and maybe she can watch the finale with me nice uh, but yeah i'm i'm excited and dreading it's <laughs> gonna be so it's gonna be so bittersweet i i hope it lives up to last season's amazing finale that just left your jaw on the floor after it ended. Um, he seems to be implying it does, and I have this feeling that they're going to do the the Silence of the Lambs ending oh, yeah. uh, with uh, with this. That, you know, they don't have the rights to Silence of the Lambs. They can't use Silence of the Lambs, but they've taken little tiny bits and pieces, you know, uh, right. from Silence of the Lambs throughout Hannibal. And I think that we're going to get the so we're going to get Hannibal escaping at the end of this. Yeah. I think so, too. Another thing that points, again, what, another thing it points to, is you're right, is that the, the climax, the finale of the film has already been done now earlier, has been moved out of the way to earlier, because the climax was Dollar Hyde attacking Will's family after Will thought he was dead and that they were safe. And we already had Dollar Hyde go after Will's family in the show. So what are they going to do? Are they going to do that again? <laughs> you know, um, 
No, I they, they might. I mean, they did the wheelchair again. They might do it again in like this kind of parallel. Right. They might do it again, or yeah. they might, or they might use, or they, or they might, or they might use the climax for totally original material to set up the next season. Something has to incite Will's wrath. Something has <laughs> to incite. Will's wrath. Yeah, because it's the wrath of the Lamb, and that's what. W Hannibal was talking to Jack about at the beginning of this episode was the wrath of the lamb and the and the wrath of the lamb would be more terrifying than the red dragon. Yeah. And that's what he said. So I so obviously they're 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 laying it on pretty thick that Will Graham is gonna get pissed and something's gonna happen with Will Graham and it's gonna be great and it's gonna be terrifying. And I'm sitting here going, ooh, I wonder what that could be. <laughs> hey, this is I'm squealing like a schoolgirl, like ee! <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I don't think we've ever seen a little Graham get truly pissed off. Yeah. Uh we've seen him kill. <laughs> we've seen him set up people to be killed. Uh, yeah. So we've seen him act through violence, but it's always been kind of calm, you know? So it'll be interesting to see Will's wrath. So I'm looking forward to this. I'm so sad, though. I got one more of these. Um, after this, we probably won't do any video discussions for a while. Because we're probably going to be yeah. doing Arrowverse discussions. Yes, Arrowverse discussions. Have you talked to Cat about that? Uh, just briefly when we were first talking about it. So that'll okay. end up being in like September um, at some point. Mid-September, I think, is when those come back. And so we'll probably do some kind of a thing with that. Of course, well, I mean, I think it's what tomorrow night that we that Vixen starts, which is the, also in the Arrowverse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the actual real Arrowverse stuff starts, yeah, like mid-September, I think. Mid to late September. Um, but yeah, we're going to be done with this uh, Hannibal discussion after one one more episode. So you're going to miss it. You're going to miss talking about Hannibal. I am too. But we'll get some more stuff up. I'm going to put up a top ten episodes of Hannibal list after Hannibal concludes. Um, probably gonna write some more articles, you know. Will and I need somewhere to gush about uh, Hannibal. We need to pay Hannibal some lip service. We do some <laughs> lip service. I, I, I was just thinking earlier today. I was thinking about writing, and I was thinking about writing an article about Hannibal. But I'm like, what can I write about that isn't obvious or hasn't been said already? I don't like, is there anything? Oh, I don't know. I can't think of anything. Try to Hannibal right. cookbook. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that pretty much brings us to an end. Uh, Will and I are getting a little quiet. I think we're just getting sad that we only have one episode left. Uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, stay tuned, everybody. Watch the finale. If you're not watching Hannibal, I don't know why you're watching this. Watch Hannibal instead of this. <laughs> then watch this and hear us talk about Hannibal. But get on the ball, folks. Watch some Hannibal. Uh, and uh, come back next week and check out our impressions of the series finale, The Wrath of the Lamb. Thank you, everybody, for listening and watching us today. I am Tyson Gifford. I'm the editor-in-chief of TV Enthusiast. And joining me today was William Rorig. He is our news director. Thank you, everybody. Night. Night.